بعدين نفوز يعني Well, uh, the subject today is decision making. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Before we start the subject, I just want you to play a little bit with your mind and ask you uh, some. If we have three oranges, one of them is heavier than the other two, and the three of them are identical, and having the balance machine, how is using the balance machine one time to decide this is the heavier one? When you said the three are identical, identical in shape? In shape. So you cannot look to them and say this is the heavier one. Can you hold it? You can hold them. So wait, each but, one. What's yeah, that? You can only use one. You can use it just once. The whole is, is it a balance? It's a balance. You put two. Okay. One on one side, one on the other side. Okay. And if they're equal, cool, then the third one is the heaviest one. Okay. If, if one is heavy, it will drop. It will drop. And then, and then what about the third one? Even the other, the other two are identical. The other two are identical. That's it. Yeah, that's it. The same weight. What if the third one's heavier than that one? Then you fix it up. You know, the 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 one that's lower is the heavy one. The other two, higher one than the one that you have for arm and the other ones. See, this is the difference between medicine and dentistry. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, now we said that we have the three, we will put one on each side, and if they are balanced so that automatically the third one is heavier, because we know we know one of them is different, so having the other one outside, that decisive thing. Can I just clarify? I'm still confused. <laughs> 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 so wait, so if he said put two, Okay. One's heavier. What about the third one? You're not the, 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 the one heavier. That's more than enough to see to know that this is the heavier one. You're trying to identify which one's the heaviest. There's only one heavy one. There's only one heavier. What if the third one's even heavier than the heaviest? Yeah. No, the other, other two are, are the same. Other two are the same. Same way. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if we took that time for the first and easy one, what we will do for the third one? Now. The second one, if we have nine. <laughs> if we have nine, if we have nine, and we don't know if it is one is different and the other eight are identical. One is different. We don't know if it is lighter or heavier. And we can use the machine three times how we can decide that this is this is the one and it is heavier or four on one side, four on another side. Yeah. One is there. Okay. And after that if they are all balanced, okay. Better to say that they are some if they are not balanced. No, first of all the oranges will never be saying that sculpture, let's say that they are some sculpture. No 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 uh, we you, we cannot we cannot decide from the shape. Okay, okay. We we have to my yeah. point is the oranges will never be the same. The, yeah, that was the given information. The given information okay, that the other are, eight are identical. Let's say that they are let's say books instead of oranges. So we will just put four on one side, four on another side. Okay. If they are the same, the last one who is put is the defect. Different. Yes, but however, if uh, most probably they will not be the balance. So okay. So what we can do is just. To Take one of them okay. on the both sides, so they will be free. Okay. After that, they will be two. After that, they will be one. So we are we are, we are using the machine ten times now. We no, can use no. the machine three no. times only. You, you do you put more down half half, and the second one's heavier. What do you mean by half half? Uh, so yeah. four four and then yeah. four and four. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, four, four, four. I didn't see it. There's one extra. Yeah. Four, yeah. Four, yeah. Four, four, four and four. four, four. If they balance. Why, why, why you don't think inside your mind and give the answer? 
I know. Wait, I have this. And this one, yeah. Yeah, we did do it, man. This is split it, and then we split it again. Yeah. We did do it, man. We split it every week. But then you don't know if it's heavier or lighter. You don't know if it's heavier or lighter. If it's a war, it's a war. The second one is the second one. 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 <laughs> I want something like okay. four and four. Okay. If this one is heavier, then okay. we eliminate this one and the one. Okay. Then we divide. We this. have five now. We don't know. No, no, we have four. two. We have four. Sorry. We have four. Yeah. Okay. Then you divide these. On okay. Two. Okay. okay. Two and two. Uh, they are they identical. No. If from the first essay, the, if this one was heavier. Well, who said that it is heavier? We don't know if it is heavier or lighter. No, we suppose. Oh, well, I'm not supposing, we have to decide. Yeah, man. We have three times. Yes. Four and four. Okay. If they are identical? They are not identical. Okay. If, if, no, no, if no, they are not identical. I'm giving you, I'm ah, They are you. not identical. Uh, we'll take the heavier. Who said that this is no, heavier? No, no, no. The four. The four and the... The four on this side, yeah. maybe because of this, one, one of the three, the four is lighter, the balance went this way. Who said that this is the heavier? Basically saying we don't know if it's light or heavy, oh, it's different. It's different. You know it's different, we don't know. That's it's like yeah. Yeah. four and four. Okay. <laughs> yes, they are you know. They are not. They are not. They are not. Are not. They are not. They are not. They are not. The four that are heavier. Yeah. Who said that they are heavier? Yeah. Oh, well, no, yeah, you said there are nine oranges. Yeah. Well, if, if by yeah. chance yeah. we don't yeah. need, we just four drop, those four drop. Because the other four are lighter. One of them is lighter. So in this four, there is a heavy four. Okay. Who says that it is a heavy? You said out of nine oranges, eight are exactly the same and one is heavier. No, one, one is different. Maybe heavier, maybe lighter. Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> now let me solve this. Week. We will go three and three. And we have three outside. If they are balanced, they are balanced, so the other three, one of them is different. So we'll get the three and put one, one of those six, three of those six, which we know that they are identical. We will put them, so if this goes up, so it's one is lighter, if it goes down, one is heavy. No, I didn't get they are no getting, the, okay. Uh, yeah. now, three and three. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have three and three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they, we have two options. One, they are balanced. And it's so one three. of the three outside three is different. Okay. I will take this three and I will put it instead of this three. Fine. I know that this is equal, definitely, because we weighted them with the other. What if they so, weren't equal? What if one exactly. I, will, I, will, I will get that, that option. Mm -hmm. So now we have this three compared to identical. Mm -hmm. So if this is coming up, that means one of the lighter. One is lighter. Oh, it goes down. It goes down. One, one, is heavier. one is heavier. So now we have three. We know if it is heavier or lighter. So we can use, we have just one, one more. One more. We so we will test two and one, the same first one. Uh, three, okay? One if now, if they are not equal, so this could be lighter, this could be heavier because the, the balance went this way. Mm -hmm. This could be lighter. Simply, I will get the three outside because I know that they are uh, identical and same. And put it here. And if the they are balanced, so that those three are one of them is heavier. heavier if they are, if this goes up, this one of these three is lighter, lighter. and I have one more. Now. I would have never got that. Out of the book. No what's it? Because he's studying engineering. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's it? What, what do you mean? Yeah. Okay. Now, if we have. Do you want more? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> if we have twelve. No. no. <laughs> and, and one of them is different. Is different. <laughs> and we have three, three times, three times to use the machine. 
how we can solve that. For sure. I, I, can, I can leave that for you for the next no, meeting. No, no, I understand. I will get it. Oh. No problem. Yeah, I, I, I will have guessed no, this thing. No, we'll have a... This, this, this is what means writing. Last page I think is not if you will not get it in. If, if you want me to solve it for you, I need the paper. The paper in one more It's very, very different. What I want to say, what I want to say, there are some problems in the life, they are very simple, and we can take the decision easily. I don't think that this is the decision making that you want me to talk to you about. I don't think that you are making decisions all the day. You made the, de the decision to come here today. You made the decision what to eat in the breakfast or what not to eat in the breakfast. I don't think that these decisions that you, you are talking about, or those decisions that, that the need to know how to take these decisions. The decisions that you need to know how to take it are the decisions that you don't have all the information about it and you don't have all the decisive factor for it. So you need to predict and calculate and ask and expect and then take the most acceptable decision at that time and you go forward and then reassist and think about it. Those decision making are the most important decision making in the life. It's not a one uh, time decision. It's ongoing decisions. But you calculate and you ask. There are mechanisms to do that. And those are the important decisions in your life. But to reach the ability and the capability of taking those decisions you need to train yourself for using the machine one time and deciding which orange is heavier and which orange are identical. Okay? It, 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 you, with the life, you are building experience. With the life, you are building tools. And you need to take the trust and you need to experience the tools for making the decisions. It is something coming with you since you were, or since we were, a few months old. And our parents, they taught us how to take the decisions. Sometimes some parents, they take decisions for their kids. And they continue taking these decisions. What to wear, and how to wear, and when, and all of these things. And they grow not capable to take any kind of decision. They are just growing in age and in body, but they are not growing in taking decisions. Other parents, they help their kids to start taking decisions from two years old or less what to wear and what not to wear. And they use the convincing techniques. I experienced this once in my life that I was with my friend. At that time I was not a priest. So we were going out winter and I went to them to take them to go out. So the husband was taking shower and I was standing, ironing his uh, stuff. And I saw the mother, she took her two years old girl to the closet to select what she's going to wear, two years old. And they got everything out of the closet to select what she's going to wear. Then she decided to take something very light 
So she said to her, it's winter, you will get cold, you will not be able to be out. So if you will get cold, you and me, we have to stay in the car because you cannot withstand the weather. She's talking to two years old. So it's illogical. Two years old girl, she said, I want it, I like it. So the mother said, okay. So I found it's completely illogical. So I said to her, Amen, what you are going to do? She said to me, wait. So I got the message and I mind my own business and I continued what I'm doing and watching what happened. She finished everything as if they are ready. And she said, I'm going downstairs to pick something from the grocery store downstairs. Do you want to come with me? So the girl said, yes, want to come? So she took her, they went out of the apartment. As soon as they went out of the door, it's very cold. So the girl started to cry. It's cold. She said to her, I have to go and get something from the grocery store. Yes, but it's very cold. But what shall we do? We should go or we should return? And she stayed just for moments to let the girl take the lesson. So they returned back. And then she took her again to the closet. And they went through the exercise again. And finally, she got what she should get exactly. And she started to teach her how to take the decision, the right decision. What's that? We have what's called the informative decision and uninformative decisions. Many times we take decisions why we don't have enough information about it. And then we decide that I'm taking this avenue. No one told me that when I go to the medicine school that I will spend the rest of my life taking care of the life of the others while I don't have a life. No one told me that before. So after <laughs> so after <laughs> so after getting into it, I discovered this, but I already spent a lot of time doing that. So I returned back to myself what I'm doing. But could be, I do enjoy that. And that's my life. That's the highest enjoyment in my life, is to do that. So is it informative decision or it was not informative decision? Is it possible to change that decision or it is impossible now to change that decision? These are the questions. This sentence that I used is not my sentence. I was in a discussion with one of the brilliant kids. He is already PhD uh, while he is in his uh, 20s. His uh, Royal College Sharif Samoy Zamai Labrin affiliated. And he finished all of this, and he is a plastic surgeon, and uh, two of the most famous plastic surgeons worldwide, they said to him, if you want to come to us at any time, you're placed there, because he is brilliant. And now he's asking this question, should I continue in this avenue, or should I change it? Here is the question. Well, the point is not in, in, in medicine and, 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 and spending time working in medicine and this, but the point is when I am taking a decision, when I decide that I will go with this girl or with this boy to be my spouse, how I take this decision, how I give myself time to take that decision. 
It's the profession, the spouse, the place to live, and the most important, my relation to my religion. How I'm taking these decisions? Is it because I like my friend who is uh, Buddhist or who is uh, Muslim or who is uh, Christian or who is uh, Orthodox or who is Protestant or who, who is whatever? I'm taking the decision to go to that church that's not or uninformative decision. I'm not taking the decision in the right way. I'm not spending enough time. Why? I'm taking a decision in the most important thing in my life. I didn't give myself enough time and the right technique to take that decision. So I need a technique for taking decisions. I need to know how to take these decisions. Because those decisions are the important decisions in my life. Definitely I'm not talking, um, and what I will tell you, I'm not talking to get up from your bed in the morning and say, okay, now we want to apply the technique for deciding what, I'm, what will be my breakfast. That will be insanity. That will be a kind of craziness. That's not the life. But the life is when I take a big decision, or when I'm taking something that affects my life and affects the surrounder's life. Because many of the decisions that we take is not just ours. It's also the surrounder's. Isu, he took decisions and he decided to get married to foreigner girls that they didn't worship God that his parents they used to worship and he went with them into relations and marriage and he was a bitterness for his parents that was his decision that was his life, yes, but he was a bitterness for his parents. So the, the decisions that we make, it's not all the time that regarding my life, and it affects my life and my life only. If I decided not to come today, that decision is not mine, that's yours. You are expecting someone will come and talk today. If it's the last time, I said, ah, you know what? I don't think that I want to go. Yes, that's very relaxing thing for myself, but that's not my decision that affects you. So it's not my right. Why? It's my life. It's my time. But it's not my right to take such a decision. So many of the decisions that we take, it's not just ours. It affects the surroundings. So we have to calculate that also. Now, the question that normally we ask, and we want to get an answer for that, how to know that this decision is according to his will? How we take a decision knowing that God is blessing this decision and he wants us to go into this avenue. That's also very important to answer. As long as we have so many questions that we need to answer, we need to find someone to answer us. Maybe the next session you can find someone to talk to you and give answers to this question. Yes? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let us, let's start to think about it. Number one, how to think? Yes. I just said something. I had already prepared a question for you and make a post on Facebook what will be the topic for today. And that was what I'd like to ask you one question about very important life. So it was the same as the 
the doctor who is doing a plastic operation mm. and who you said he's thinking if he, if he should continue with this or no. And my question was about one decision, so uh, how I will decide it. But it happened several days ago and until now the God already gave me a signal. God already gave you a signal? Yes. Okay. Uh, I will not question how God gave you this signal, yes. but I just will tell you, you have to be very careful when you say that God, God gave me a signal. I know. Because I it could be God, it could be your aiming, I see. could be the devil, could be, it's just uh, distortion. So how, how you, you said that this is God's voice to me? You can answer that to yourself, not to me, because it's it's a different answer to everyone. I just, my, my, my responsibility is to raise the subject, not to answer the question. Go ahead. We can speak maybe after the lecture. Okay, we can talk later about that. Now, we have these subjects, we have these decisions, these or those big decisions in our life. Number one, to take a decision, we have to know, we have to know, we are, we are going to produce a product. The decision is a product. So we have to have the raw material for that product. The raw material for that product is the information about that product. We need this information. This information are consistent of many aspects. We, we need to know what is the standard in this life. For example, the same person that I'm, I'm talking to you about now, like, 10 years ago or something like that, he was about to get into the high school or more, maybe more than 10 years ago. He was about to get into the high school. And he calculated a very simple calculation saying that going into the high school, spending this number of years, and going to the college, spending this number of years, if I will spend the same time in training, I will be one of the most famous football players. What the football players they make in one year is more than what is the, uh, the most famous physician does in his life. So why I should spend my life into this? So when he started to say that, we said to him, yes, what you are saying is very correct, but you can tell us what is the percentage of those play football that they get the amount of money you are talking about from those who are playing football in the world. You will discover that it is not even one in a million. Everyone plays football. But very few of them, they play football as part of a team. And very few of them as a selected team. And very few of them selected to one of the famous uh, clubs. And we can go and go and go into this. So he is very brilliant. He got the mathematics and he understood that this is not the right decision, so he went to the high school and continued and he went to the uh, medicine school. So the information that we need, we have to dig for this information. And the source of the information. So the first step is for taking the decision is asking the professionals. I have to ask the professionals. I have to, if I'm going to medicine school, I have to ask the graduated physicians, 
how they see their life, how they enjoy their life, how they do this, how they do that. This another part of the information also. What is the level of the life that they are getting? And what is the time they are spending? And what is the enjoyment in the time that they are spending? And then I have to ask, what is the other profession that I want to take? And I have to ask the professionals in that profession and how they spend their life and what is the level of their life and all of the information about the other profession and make the comparison. Maybe I will see, yes, I'm spending more time in this medicine profession, but it's more enjoyable, it's more rewarding. So maybe, yes, I would do it. Maybe spending my life to care for the life of others is more enjoyable than spending my life for someone to care for my life. Or maybe spending my life to care for the life of the others is more enjoyable than spending my life in taking care of buildings as structural engineer or uh, for, for drawing uh, uh, plans for as uh, architect or for taking care of ele uh, electrons running in the, in the wires as uh, electrical engineer and so on. So I, when I ask the others how they feel that. So this, this information, asking the professionals. The second thing that ask those that they love me, those that they can help me in taking the decision. They do not have any intention but my best. I need to talk to them and ask them, Dad, how do you see it? Mom, how do you see it? My sister, my brother, Abuna, father, how do you see it? Not to take the, their words as the final word. Even Abuna's word is not the final word. It's the advising word. Collecting this information, collecting this information, and put everything in front of God in prayer. This is the second step. Or it is the ongoing step that while I'm collecting the information, I'm praying for the availability of the information. And take all of them and pray and put it in front of God. And then take all of that to someone that I like to talk to. That one could be a priest, could be a friend, could be someone in my family, someone that I trust his way of thinking or her way of thinking. And they do not have any hidden agenda. They just want my best and they are capable not to dictate the decision, but to help me to take the decision. Until I feel that I'm satisfied with the decision. And if I'm not satisfied with this decision, I have to return back, praying, collecting, and praying, and discussing the information, and going to a decision. If not, have to repeat the process until, and with repeating the process, I'm collecting more information and reaching the uh, satisfaction. If you apply this mechanism to anything in your life, you discover that this mechanism is applicable. Deciding the person that will be my spouse. Okay, so I will collect information. Who is she? And what the, the, the information about her, her life, and her religion, and her uh, quality of life, and her way of thinking, and, 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 and collecting all of this information. And then take all of this information and go to someone that he knows more about that. And 
talk to him and put that in front of God and pray and ask him, what's your decision? God, please lead me, tell me. Tell me and reveal to me in this information what's right and what's wrong. Because there is a possibility that God reveals to me something that fatal, that shows me that, yes, she is a very good girl, but she's not good for me. Yes, he is a very good boy, but he is not good for me. So the decision is with the help, with his help, that will, uh, will be revealed to, to me, sorry. And then praying and asking and collecting and all of this and go to someone that I can talk to, I can discuss that subject with that person. And finally, if I'm satisfied with the decision, I will go for it. If not, I need to return back and collect more information. And so on. This is applicable for everything. Now, we have a part that praying and asking God and asking Him to reveal how we do that. The problem that most of us they do that at the time of the need. It's not that we do it before. So, if we do that in the time of the need, it's already distorted time. We have distortion, we have many things coming. So at that time, I don't have the capability to clarify that this is really his voice. But if I train myself before and have this relation and I build history with him knowing that this is the way that I hear his voice, he will tell me definitely yes. I have the right to ask him because he is not only my God. He is my dad. So I have the right to ask him, you are my dad. When I say to him, our father who art in heaven, I'm not saying something just for uh, complimentary things. I'm revealing my belief that he is my father who is in the heaven. So I need to ask my father who is in the heaven, what's your opinion in this? And I want to hear it. If I want to hear it, if I want to hear his voice, he will tell me. How? He knows. He's capable to do it. And I have the right to tell him, what? I think that I heard you saying so and so. So I will take this decision. If this is not your voice, tell me, in a clearer way but if you will not tell me in a clearer way I will take this decision and if there is a problem with this decision that's yours problem you need to solve it because I'm not taking this decision because I'm depending on my intelligence I'm depending on your voice I have the right to say that to God he is my father I have to ask him I have the right to ask him I have to be very clear in asking him and waiting for his answer. I have a question. What's that? I have a question. Definitely. Can you give God a time, um, a deadline? No. Yes. No, I cannot give him a deadline. But I can, I, I can uh, give him, but this should be the way that we are talking together. If you will do this to me, that means you want this. I have this, but this is not for everyone. You remember one of the prophets, Old Testament. He said to him a very strange thing. Tomorrow, I want the water to be everywhere, but not on this wood. Or, uh, not, not on this wood. The next day, I want it to be on this wall and not on the other 
places. And I said to him, okay, I will do it for you. I don't have a problem. I can't change the nature for you. You have the right. That's deadline, isn't it? What's that? That's saying tomorrow I want this sign. So that is a deadline. No, he, he, he didn't say I, I want it tomorrow. Could be he said that I want tomorrow. It wasn't framed as a, as a deadline. Ah. Yeah. But you can have that like relationship with God, can't you? You can say, like, show me by this time, I need to know before so I make a decision. decision by this time. Sometimes because sometimes I, I don't accept that uh, or I, I don't put it like 100% because sometimes we put uh, uh, deadlines uh, while we need more information. Was that the case? So, no, that was... Uh, Sometimes, sometimes we ask for things. We still need time. We need, we need to get lessons. We need to get information. So I'm, I want to take a decision while I still I am I'm growing. So God will tell me, I want to answer you, but you will not understand it now. So just wait. No, 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 I want it. It depends on your relationship and your level it, of spirituality as well. It, uh, I don't want also to leave it for the level of spirituality because this will depress someone. I'm not in the level of spirituality or a good level of spirituality for God to answer me. No, this is not the case. Maybe sometimes we need time. We need time to grow. We need time to learn lessons. Because they explain it this, this way, if, if a kid, four years old, he asked his mom for a chocolate, she would answer him one of three answers, okay, here it is, or okay, but not now, or no. Why? He is asking for a chocolate, it's a very simple and easy thing. If he has an allergy, she would say no. You are asking for something, it seems to be very good for you, but it will hurt you. So no. If he doesn't have allergy, but he is asking for the chocolate just before the lunch, she would say, okay, but not now. Finish your lunch and I will give you the chocolate. If he is asking for the chocolate, after the lunch, with great pleasure, here it is. So the same way that when we ask God, we have that. I remember, uh, just a second, I remember one day I saw on the YouTube, someone, he was criticizing the Christianity. So he brought a gallon of milk, and he put the gallon of milk in front of him. And he said, my God is this gallon of milk. So I will ask this God a question. He will answer me the same way that the Christians are talking about. He will say, okay, here it is. Or he will say, no. Or he will say, not that. Because simply there is no other way. What is the answer for that? Can you please repeat because I didn't understand. Okay. He said, he said that the Christians they claim that their God answered them in one of three ways. This or this or that. Okay. So I said, okay, my God is this kind of movement. And I will ask him, and he will give me the same answer. Simply because there is no another way of answering. There is no other option. If I will go to the store, and I will ask the attendant, do you carry this? Yes, we have it in I am number so and so. Or, no, we don't. Or, yes, but we don't have it now. Come after two days, the shipment will come and you will find it. That's, that's his idea. Yes, that's very correct, but there is a very, very, very important thing in that. We are not dealing with God as a service provider. We are dealing with God as a father. 
We don't ask him to provide the services. We ask him to intervene and act with me in my life and with my own free will. I'm allowing him to intervene in my life and because he respects my free will, he will not intervene in my life unless I allow him to do that. So that's what's the meaning of asking God. And when I'm, ask, I'm asking God, I'm telling him, please intervene in my life. I'm begging you, I'm allowing you to get into my life and change whatever you want to change. So because I'm doing that with my free will, so I'm achieving what he wants uh, to do. Or what I'm getting what he wants to do in my life. Hearing his voice. Number one, that I want to hear his voice. This is the most important part of it. Number two, number two, I'm building a way of hearing his voice with the time and with the experience. In the time that I don't have confusion, I don't have problems. But in the uh, safe and easy time, I'm building this relation. Like, if I like to hear the news from the BBC, if I'm adjusting my uh, radio to BBC, just turning on the radio, I will receive the signal. But if I hear that there is a very important breaking news now, and it is broadcasted on BBC radio, and I want to hear it now, so what I'm going to do is to try to adjust the radio. What's happening that I'm running between the most left to the most right and passing by the BBC radio and all what I'm hearing is I cannot recognize anything and I'm passing by BBC radio. This is what we do when we have this relation with God. At the need time, at the confusion time, I get confusion. And so that's the importance of building the relation in the easy time. I think that I finished. You have. Yeah. Yes. So Jesus, Jesus said, um, um, "Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and yes. it will be opened to you." Mm. To what extent does he mean this? Very good. He meant that to the maximum, but. We have to take this verse also with another verse. That you are asking and you don't get you don't get because you are asking bad. So if I'm asking according to his will, there is no limit. Up to the limit that I say that this then should be returned back. He will do it. But if I'm doing that according to his will, I'm not doing that to show off. I'm not doing that to uh, control the others. I'm not doing that to, 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 but there is a real need. And it, it, it happened in the history of the church many times. One of them that I think, St. Macarius, that uh, he saw a widow. She was weeping and crying and devastated and he asked her what's the problem she said that my husband died and he uh, took uh, uh, something from a very strong person in the community and that person he asked me to pay it back and I don't have the money and I don't know where he put the money so he took her to the tomb of that man and he asked him in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking you, where do you put these things? So a voice came saying, I put it in this place. So I said to him, okay, 
continue sleeping until the Lord will come and raise you up. And she went and she found uh, where he put these things. But this is St. Maccabeus. So what's the limit? There is no limit. But it needs to be according to his will. It's not just to show off for him. Yes? What else? Done? Forgive the glory forever and ever.